That's right, folks. Time for another computer build. There is a reason for the odd choice of hardware, though, which I'm sure people are already pointing out in the comments a mere 15 seconds into the video. Hear me out here. My goal for this build was to spend as little money as possible. No expenses paid, as opposed to no expenses spared, no matter what the hardware I ended up with was. Now, there are some caveats, because you can certainly get cheaper hardware, particularly if you look at the used market, or the lightly used market, I guess, the refurbished market. But I didn't want to go with any of that. I wanted to buy from one vendor, and I wanted to get it local. And I guess, technically, this isn't a complete computer build, because there's no case, there's no power supply, there's no keyboard mouse monitor, there's no anything else. But you could run this as is, just sitting on a desk. So I consider this to be a complete PC build. Or at least a semi-complete PC build. It's a PC base, we'll call it that. So here's what we've got. I have always wanted to experiment with one of these cheap AMD Athlon CPUs, these modern ones. So this is what we've ended up with. I believe this is a second gen equivalent chip. Uh, Zen Plus, but I'm not 100% sure on that, because they've reused this name for a couple of different CPUs, so it's kind of hard to tell. This is surprisingly heavy, considering the small chip and the lightweight nature I'm sure the cooler is. I definitely like the fact it comes with integrated video, so you don't have to add a video card that lowers the costs. And this is a very small chip with a low TDP, I believe it's rated 35 watts, which is superbly low, especially compared to a lot of the Intel stuff. So here's the RAM. Uh, again, this is, I think, as cheap as you can get for an 8 gigabyte kit, which is pretty much all you can get these days with respect to DDR4. So, this is what we've ended up with. Now, these two things are not necessarily part of this build, um, but I am going to be reusing the other Lexar NS100 SSD for this particular build. So I had to buy another one, or another SSD, so I figured I might as well go for the same kind of thought, buy the cheapest one available, and that would be this. Uh, 128 gigabyte SSD here. 128 gigs is kind of small these days, but you know it's still more than plenty usable for anything I'd ever do with a computer. Most of my storage is centralized, and I had to buy this mounting bracket. Again, this is not the cheapest thing that you can buy. Uh, normally, I would go for the Kingston brackets, the metal ones, the just bare metal ones but those were out of stock. Uh, that would have shaved two dollars off of the cost, but oh well. And of course the motherboard, which again, this is the cheapest thing you can get, and it's a, kind of a landslide. I think the next cheapest board is twice the cost. Um, I wasn't aware that Biostar was even still in business, but I guess they are. And they've been producing these cheap looking, but kind of, you know, these cheap, but neat looking, I guess is what I really want to say. AMD boards. I don't know if they produce any Intel ones anymore, but uh, there was this, there was the A320, which was cheaper, but was, again, not available. So, this is what we've ended up with. Remains to be seen how reliable it is. I've had some issues with Biostar boards in the past, but, you know, these days a board's a board, really. As long as it's got the functionality that it needs. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll pull the board out, and we'll have a look at it, see if we can get this thing at least posting tonight. Alright, inside the box. How to clean your PC. It's kind of odd. I don't think I've ever seen that included with a motherboard before. 
something tells me you wouldn't be putting such a cheap, nasty board into a nice case like that, but maybe that's just me. There, of course, is the manual. I keep saying it, but again, I'm very shocked they actually give you a CD with the drivers on it. That's actually quite impressive. It's not that I don't need that. This is going to run Linux. Use your I.O. plate. Pretty sparing. There aren't a whole lot of things on these I.O. shields these days. I don't know. Does this have HDMI? I thought it did. I hope it's got HDMI. Otherwise, we may have a problem. But, uh, yeah, there's that. Two SATA cables, which we will probably make use of. And then, of course, underneath it all, there's the board itself. Before I continue, this is the hardware cost of everything that I purchased. So you can see, just a hair above $200 total. The sad part is, is that the next cheapest Intel CPU was almost $200 in terms of cost, so Intel's really got to work on their affordability and their lower end of the scale kind of thing because that just should not happen. The motherboard in all of its glory. I was expecting the yellow to be a little bit brighter than it is. I guess the pictures didn't do a good job rendering it. But that's alright. I still think it looks kind of sleek. Definitely cheap, but it looks pretty sleek. The two RAM slots is really probably the most limiting factor on this. Because that'll really limit the uh, upgrade options. you got to replace all the RAM if I were to move this up to 16 gigs. But I don't ever see a need to move to 16 gigs. I suppose if I'm going to upgrade this particular system, it'll be with faster memory. But Well, it, it is what it is. For cheap boards, you get what you get. Um, it does have a PCI Express X16. That's actually a pretty nice little locking mechanism. I tend to like these more than the the ones that are on the side because if you got a big giant card, you tend not to be able to actually get the card out. So, and a fairly nice set of uh, front panel connections, except I think they're backwards compared to what they normally are on boards. So that's kind of odd. And I'm not even really sure it corresponds with... Yeah, it doesn't even really match up with what the pins would be. So that's kind of interesting. Looks like there are two fan headers. One for CPU, obviously. And then there's one down here. Again, that's pretty typical for lower-end boards to only have two fan headers. Typical of, I'm sorry, micro ATX board in general. Only generally have two fan headers. I wish they had more, but they don't. You gotta work with what you get. Super LAN surge protection. One thing I didn't realize this board had was an NVMe slot. So that's awful tempting to, at some point down the road, purchase an upgrade for that. Maybe when I upgrade my main computer's SSD, which will probably be around Christmas, I'll put the that SSD in here, then I can get rid of the uh, one SATA plug. That'd be nice to do. 4-pin CPU power, not 4-pin, 8-pin CPU power. I don't know why I keep calling that 4-pins. It's because I, I see, you know, the 2x4 and I say, oh, it's got 4 as opposed to 2, but whatever. It does have HDMI, so it looks like the uh, I.O. plate got a little bent. I don't know, is that a combination PS2 port or is that just for a keyboard? Normally if it's a combination port, it's got both colors. Not that it matters, I have USB peripherals. But it is nice it comes with four USB 3.0 ports. I'm going to get that cooler, uh, not cooler, that CPU unboxed and we'll get it mounted with all of its tiny little pins. Okay, here's the chip itself. Again, with all the tiny little pins on the back. Seems awfully fragile, but then again, the thing with the Intel's LGA sockets, 
is, I mean, you either damage the chip or you damage the board when you bend a pin. So, and considering they cost about the same amount when you get cheap components like this, you know, really, what's the uh, what's the difference? It comes with a sticker, obviously, and a little cooler. It's a tiny little thing, but for 35 watts, it's probably sufficient. It's the same cooler that AMD's been using for years. Here it is installed on the board. It's funny, uh, it looks pretty much exactly the same to the older AMD CPUs. I mean, there's basically almost no difference. It's kind of amusing, really. Here we go. Cooler is now installed. I love this mounting system. This is probably one of the best mounting systems for a cooler ever. Certainly far superior to Intel's dumb push pins, which put an insane amount of board flex onto the board. It's just it's it's insane because this has an actual backing plate and all that cool stuff. It's really easy to install too. It's in fact probably easier than the push pins. You just put it down, you make sure that this clamp is in place, you make sure that this is lifted up, you put that clamp down and then you close it. Couldn't be any easier. Went ahead and I unpackaged the SSD. I think I'm going to go ahead and just use it in this build. Because I'm going to be putting this, I do have a new case that this is going to go into. That's got the, uh, the proper 8-pin CPU power connector and all that. But I was, re I realized while I was pulling this out that I don't even think I need that SSD mounting bracket because I think the case actually has a two and a half inch SSD mount in it so that was kind of a waste of six dollars and fifty cents I may use it anyway just because I don't know if I've got the proper screws to mount this drive and I don't want to use those ones simply because those go to that but eh, I don't know we'll see what happens I may just use those screws anyway I haven't really decided yet Alright, ready for power up. I'm hoping that the wireless keyboard and mouse are going to work on this system. I guess we'll find out. We'll also find out if it'll actually work. If anything's going to be wrong, I bet it'll be because the BIOS is out of date. Now, let me see. How am I going to power this up? Where is the actual switch? I believe it's right here. And it's on. Let's see what it does. Okay, the fact that it's doing nothing is very unpromising. Oh, there it goes. It just took it a little while. See, nothing on the screen, though. CMOS fail. Press delete to enter setup. Well, I could take a quick peek. Oh, what happened? Oh, it's in a boot loop. Well, let me get this hopefully working. My gosh, check out this BIOS. Impressive. Okay, well, it's not uh, 2020 anymore, thankfully, so I'm going to have to set that. System language is fine. Uh, it is actually October 16th today. I'm going to set this thing up to my liking, and then we'll see if we can get it to boot something. Okay, so now that we've got it to boot, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to run a complete fresh installation. of Ubuntu Mate over the network, which will hopefully work. Right. Install. It's very quick, so should be good enough. I don't use this for much. It's really just a testing machine anyway. 
normal installation, obviously. I guess time will tell if it's uh, reliable. I think it is going to install in EFI mode because I saw ESP. I think that's EFI service partition. So that's good. Okay, that was a pretty fast install. It's funny, I've been doing a lot of modern computer videos lately, and yet this channel was supposed to be built for vintage stuff. We'll get back to it eventually, I suppose. It's just I don't have a whole lot of time to spend on stuff like this anymore. I shouldn't even really be doing this. I should be in bed. Even it's almost 4 o'clock in the morning, but this stuff has been tantalizing me for a week. <laughs> so... I wanted to get this done. Let's check the power usage. Less than 20 watts. That is pretty impressive. And it's actually, it is working on something right now, so I'd imagine when it's idling, it'd be even less. That's not bad for a desktop computer. Alright, let's go ahead and run some benchmarks. It's really only a CPU benchmark, but uh, that's practically the only thing that I really want. So maybe we can get some idea of performance, maybe power usage while that's going on. It's still not using much at all. even while it's actually performing work. So that's really impressive. Okay, there are your performance scores for this particular system. This is what $220 gets you. At least as far as CPU performance goes. So I guess it's more like that's what $90 gets you, but it works well enough, I suppose. I think if you if you go to the used market, you can get cheaper than this. That's probably better than this, but... It's the ultimate in value, so... That's pretty much it for that until I install it in the case. And here it is, installed in the case. Pretty modern case at that. You know, these things are still in service. But, uh... I grabbed it only because the hard drive LED, the connector broke when I went to go remove it because I needed the board that was in this for a project. So, whatever. I've got it now, and everything is now installed where it needs to go. I've added an optical drive to it because that's something that I do add to my machine still. And I think that's pretty much all that I need to describe. Got all the cables plugged in. Hopefully everything works. No issue. I'm going to go ahead and put the side panel on. And even though I don't normally do it, I am going to go ahead and install the case stickers. Just because I feel like I should install the case stickers. So, we'll do that. Case badges. Here's a better look at the front. I actually have some USB 3.0 now which is very nice. But now i got to do the incredibly fun thing of getting this actually hooked up. Alright, there it is. Sorry for any potential wind noise, but... It's there. Uh, we'll change the battery on the camera because it died. And then we'll change it to analog input. And then we'll come down here and hit the power switch. And hopefully it will work. Ah, here we go. Biostar and Motherboard. Should just go straight into Linux. 
does. Everything seems to work without issue. Cool. Let me just make sure that my speakers are going to work. It has the new compact logo, which was introduced in 2007. And, and as you might guess by the WM at the end of its model number, it was exclusively sold at Walmart. So this was a Walmart special. It says Pentium dual core inside in Windows Vista. So I think it works very nicely. You can see it can play 1080p video. Of course, this is not a 1080p monitor. So it's going to be doing some scaling, downscaling in particular. I think it would qualify as a 1080p monitor, except it's 6 by 4 by 3 and not 16 by 9. So it's not widescreen. But it does work, and it does everything that I need it to do. So it should be more than good enough for any of my projects. And just like that, we're going to conclude the video. So thank you for watching, and if you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below.